The man, the myth, the legend, just three of his titles. He needs no introduction, but mine is the master of the mediaverse himself. Welcome, Glenn Beck. How are you? Excellent. It's a pleasure to be on your show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, let's get right into it. Uh, sure. This is wartime that we're in, right? There's a global war, there's a digital war, there's a spiritual war, uh, American regime at war with the people. Yeah. How do you wake up every day and stare it in the face? Uh, <laughs> I have uh, uh, sworn it all off, except for about three hours at night, um, four to five hours in the morning, and then that's it. And I, I go and I paint, I do anything other than look at the news. Otherwise, it's just, it's just too much. It's too much. It's everywhere. Um, and my skill has always been able to take things that seem to be disconnected and go, no, actually, that belongs over in this group and this and this. And so you start to see the whole picture. Um, and that's a little overwhelming, especially now. Absolutely. The things that I've been talking about forever, it seems, that I really hoped that I was wrong on, you know? You're like, I don't think I am, but boy, I want to be wrong. It's all starting to happen. Yeah. And we're, we're at the crossroads. Being right ain't what it used to be. It hurts. No, it does. Hurts a lot. And with information overload, you know, people do want to back out, but we can't right. quite do that. So, no. uh, so let's start with the global picture. Some people are calling it World War III. You think that's right? Uh, I, I think the elites of the world are hell bent on it. Uh, at least it seems. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you have Antony Blinken coming out yesterday and saying, "Oh, you know what? Ukraine's going to be a part of NATO. That's why we're here this week to get that done." That's insane. That's do you, insane. Do you think he believes his own words that it's going to happen? Yeah. 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 I. It. It, it seems to me. Well, it makes sense if you if you studied anything about the Fabian socialists um, back in you know the nineteen uh, teens, they all wanted to they they wanted to topple all of these kingdoms and and it was a new scientific era and we can maybe plant the new seeds of this new society, and they were actually anxious for World War One. They they were you know not all of them, but generally speaking, they were pretty excited about the possibilities of what could happen after. And I think these people today are so arrogant and have AI um, at their side that they think that they can topple this and create a utopia. And I think they're, I think they're all in. It's all almost in. as if we built a machine that could process anything and there's now nothing left to process except for our own selves. Yeah, it's, it's going to consume all of us. I, 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 um, I worry about the next eight months. Yeah. I think the next eight months um, are critical because the, the, the elites of the world, you know, there's more elections happening in the next six months than any other time in the history of voting in the world. That's wild, right? Yeah, wild. Um, by far more elections. That's why you're starting to see the farmers win mm -hmm. over in Europe because they're backing off, but they're not backing off. They're not saying we're not going to do it. They're delaying it. They're saying, okay, you know what? We'll take this back up after the election. Um, and yeah, I, hopefully, I've, I've been seeing the uprising of the farmers again last week. They, they're not buying into that. They know that they've got to change things during the elections. But it seems like all of the politicians know something that we don't know. Never before in my life, I've been doing broadcast now for 50 years, never have I ever seen in a political cycle people saying, ow, that hurts. And the politicians say, oh, good. Want some more? Mm -hmm. You it's don't working. do that. It makes yeah. no sense. No, the system is working as Correct. designed. Correct. Um, and, and I think for a lot of Americans, you know, it's 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 cognitive dissonance because on the one hand, we've got a government that's totally out of control, that's globalized itself, that is trampling the Constitution, using technology as a weapon against its own people. But on the world stage, it seems like we've never been weaker. Yeah. And by choice. Yeah. I mean, we are... You're watching it being dismantled. I think it was in 2000, I don't know, three, 
that I started really thinking about things like Russia. And <laughs> I don't think we actually won anything. All they did was change their uniforms into suits. That's all they did. And then they started making money openly as oligarchs instead of just, oh, it just happens to be all of the people, you know, um, in power that happen to have all of this money and you don't. Um, I don't think we I don't think we won. We acted like we won, but we didn't. They just did the same thing China did. And that is, oh, wait a minute. Communism isn't the right idea. Fascism is a better idea. Fascism. Take Take, let people go ahead and own some things, but if we can get into the government and we can control those people and then control how they run it and, and get kickbacks from everybody else, or maybe our friends are just running all these things, that's so much better than communism because you have that capitalist kind of crony capitalist system that everybody can enrich themselves except for the average person. That's all they did. That's all they did. And now um, they're putting the final nails in the entire Western world. They're coming in and they are, I mean, do you think we live in a, in a, a constitutional republic anymore? Yeah, that ship has sailed yeah, most, it has. most of the way. I mean, it's it terrible has. to say it. Right. We still got the paper and we still got a, a, a people that cares and right. wants it restored. The people care. The people are the ones that can save it. The people, and not just here. If you watch, um, if you watch the uprisings all around the world, Hong Kong, what happened to those people? The minute we took our eye off of Hong Kong, China just made them all disappear. They're gone. They're gone. What happened to those millions of people that were in the street? They're just gone. That's over. Okay. And, the, and, and out of the news, too. Correct. And that's what's being prepared now here throughout the entire Western world. We're all saying the same things. We're all saying, you don't care about us. You're doing things. You're, you're designing this new world, and you tell us that you're not. And then when somebody goes, but wait a minute, look at this, you call them a conspiracy theorist, and then a few months later, after it's all been done, you go, oh yeah, of course we're doing that. Yeah. Where are we? We're not in a representative republic anymore. They say that good men create good times. Well, the same is true of businesses. Good people are the bedrock of a successful enterprise. Unfortunately, the hiring pool today is bleak. Political demands, petty entitlement, and open incompetence are now commonplace. You need to reach the people who are keen to join your business. New Founding has created a network of high excellence professionals who are seeking to join grounded American businesses. These are individuals, often in elite organizations, who are ready for a team and mission that supports their values instead of working against them. Aligned companies are using this network to hire high trust, exceptional individuals who match the culture and the mission of their teams. Apply for access to the New Founding Talent Network at newfounding.com backslash talent you'll get connected with the candidates who will build up your business. That's newfounding.com backslash talent. You've studied this for a long time. You've been ahead of the curve on so much of this stuff. Uh, you, you've tracked the, the Russia obsession, you know, the way that they're using scapegoats to take our minds and our hearts off of what they're doing and look, look elsewhere for enemies. What do you think is at the root of this at the end of the day? Is it, is it anti-Christian? Is it anti-American? What is the root of it? So I would say that it was, um, at the beginning, I think it was for the, for the players that are not directly orchestrating. Not, so not WEF members. Sure, many layers. Yeah. Um, the person that is just in there, I think they thought they were doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, it was survival. It might have been greed. After 2008, really after Occupy Wall Street, why did that just go away? Why did that just go away? And why is it that the people that they were protesting, Wall Street, big banks, uh, the hedge funds, why are they all of a sudden the ones funding all of the radicals? 
Was there some kind of deal that was made? Leave us alone. We'll feed you. Just don't eat us. Yeah. So I think there was survival. There was corruption. But now I think the only thing to describe it really honestly is evil. We're fighting. We're not fighting Democrats and Republicans. We're fighting evil. Evil has taken, I think, the West by the throat. And as always, it thinks it's going to win. Um, and it might for a while. We, we deserve a little choke out from time to time um, because we have been foolish, reckless, unbelievably trusting, stupid, greedy. Um, and we don't deserve the freedoms that we have. You we go don't. back to the end of the Cold War. You look at, you know, what happened when uh, when the Soviet Union fell? Did we try to recreate a, a workable world order? Did we try to maybe bring even Russia into NATO, as no. it was being discussed for a while? We sent Larry Summers and Sheryl Sandberg and Bain Capital into, into Russia and just told them to go nuts. And we see what happened as a result. So, you know, I, sometimes, I mean, I don't know if you ever feel tempted to sometimes feel a little bit bad for the elites who, you know, they thought that they were just going to turn the world into America and we'd all live happily ever after. It's not what happened. How do you mean feel sorry for the elites? Well, you know, I think that there are layers, right? And some of those folks who are in there, you, you work all your life to get into government. It's finally your turn. You get in there and, and you look at, at what you have to work with yeah. and it's not, not so hot. I think there are those that had honest, you know, they had honest, good thing. I think a lot of people did. I don't give that benefit of the doubt to, yeah. the, to the State Department, quite right. honestly. Um, but I think there were a lot of people that... I mean, I think most Americans, we didn't know this stuff was going on. Right. You know, when we started seeing people, we don't torture, but we're ghost planing. That should have been the first, it was for me, one of the first tip offs of, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not the good guys. I can, I can begin to see why the Middle East hates us so much. Yeah. We're righteous. We're coming in in our cape and superhero tights. And we don't do that. We stand for truth and justice. We're hey. going to rid the world of evil. Uh, of evil. Yeah. But here, let us prop up this regime. You torture the crap out of them to get the information. We'll stand over here posing in our cape. Oh, my gosh. Of course people hate that. Yeah. I would hate that. Well, so you got you got uh, the primrose path of of naive expectations. You've got the worship of money. You've got globalizing the American regime. Even if you're not evil, you're creating the conditions for evil to sweep through the world. Because you're taking away every every check and balance. Yeah. Every check and balance. We know that people with greed and power will go bad. We know it. It's human nature. So. When you're taking away the checks and balances, when you're just giving, you know, I, I don't want, like, I trust my church. I don't want my church in charge of the government. Bad idea. Right. Okay? I don't want them to have all power. No. I want a government over here. I want the churches to influence the people. I want them, churches, when they're at their best, they change people's heart and you want to do good, that's what the American Republic is all about. It doesn't survive without a group of people that want to serve each other because in service of each other, we're in the service of our God, okay? When we are doing the right things in our own life, we know government is not God, God is government. So it puts government in its rightful place, but it also we it 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 fosters compassion and decency and the checks and balances. Hey, you know what? You're doing some really dirty things. I don't care if you were good for my district. You're out. Yeah. You're immoral. And you know, I don't I don't want to demonize all technologists, but there's I don't think there's any question that what what we've been sold, what we've been, been presented with is it's not going to be about your church influencing the, the people, influencing society. Tech is your new church. These are the tools that are going to change everything. It's going to be, it's going to be paradise on earth. Uh, pay no attention to the evil behind the curtain. We've got all these great new toys. We created them, so they're going to save us. We're living in every dystopian movie or book I've ever read. And we don't, we, we'll watch those. It's like reading the Bible. You'll, be, you'll see the people and they'll start to go bad and you're like, Dude, a hundred pages ago, you were taught a lesson. Yeah. 
every dystopian thing we've ever read, every science fiction outside of Star Trek, which is this happy kind of, oh, we get it suddenly. Um, we're living it, and we are the people that would be sitting in the movie theater going, people would never do that. They'd never accept that. They'd never, that's not going to happen. Well, we're living it. We're the people that future generations will read about and go, dummy, how did you not see this happen? You know, they have told us every step of the way. I first read, when it comes to technology, I first read uh, Age of Spiritual Machines by mm -hmm. Ray Kurzweil. Have you read mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. Um, and that came out, what, mid to late 90s? And it took me eight years to get my first interview with Ray mm -hmm. Kurzweil. He's freaking terrifying. And I've seen, he is, he is, it, it's the most utopia kind of Disney world that comes out of him that you're like, wow, that sounds really cool. And at the same time, I've said this to him, his face, I don't know the difference between you and the Nazi doctors. Yeah. Um, and you how'd know, that go over? It didn't go over well, but I said, <laughs> let me explain. I know you're, I know you're Jewish. I yeah. know, but let me explain. What's the difference between somebody who's saying we can build them blonde and blue eyed and we can make them stronger and faster through injecting dye in their eyes, which didn't work. Yeah. You just have the technology to do those things but you're talking about the same thing, and you're talking about it in the same way, that there is no death, that, that you're just going to download people. People are just, they're just the math of their head. Well, no, people are more than that. You know, what about the spiritual side? It doesn't matter. It's progress, progress, progress. Yeah. Um, you know, when, and, and we're already starting to see it. <laughs> I remember people used to think I was so insane. And I'm like, read the words of these guys. They're talking about it. Everything they have talked about in the past has come true because it's technology. And you can pretty much predict now. You couldn't then, but you can pretty much see the course you're on. Um, it's all out in the open. It's all out in the and open. And so the question is, you know, if we're going to have the kind of change of heart, that kind of spiritual reawakening that we need in order to get out ahead of the future that's being created for us. Can we afford to be fighting and funding all these wars around no. the world? No, what can we afford? What can we afford? We, we are the, 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 the person, in fact, I have somebody that just was taken away by the FBI that lives in my neighborhood. Yeah. He had a Gulf Stream. He was flying all over the world. He was sponsoring the, you know, the big PGA um, tour overseas. I mean, this guy seemed to have it all. No, he didn't. He was embezzling money from his own company. He didn't have all that money. That money wasn't his. That's who we are. That's who the United States of America is. We're living on bogus money projecting bogus power when 25% of our F-35s don't work enough to go into war. I don't care if they can fly and take off again. Can they deliver the war promises? The answer is no, 25% of them. What, you, what, what kind of power are we projecting? Especially when you have Anthony Blinken and the people who brought us the Afghanistan withdrawal. The world knows who we are now. It's over. It's over. Well, here's the pushback, and this is coming from you know parts of the right as well as the, as well as the left. Is they say the world's not big enough. We can't share. It's us or them. It's either going to be China eats us, or or we have to fight wars around the world until further notice. How do you respond? Uh, I like George Washington. Yeah, so you you seemed, know? seemed like a smart guy. Yeah, mind your own business. Mind your own business. I do think that there are times when. Um, it's it's not incumbent upon us to fight the war. Look, Israel's a great example. I don't want to fight the war with Israel. I don't want Israel. Yeah. Leave Israel alone. They can defend themselves. They're not, you notice, they're not out asking for everybody's help. They're just saying, would you let us fight our own war? Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't have to, I don't have to get involved in it. Um, I, I have a side, a favorite side, but I'm just going to say, you know, that was established because they weren't welcome anywhere. So the world said, let's give them their own home because every time they go to someplace else, they come under attack and they can't defend themselves because the government of that country says, well, no, you're not. So give them their own country. Good. We did. Now leave them alone. Leave them alone. You can condemn them or you can cheer for them, but we don't have to be involved. When it comes to Ukraine, I don't know what the hell is going on with that other than this is a setup. This is an absolute setup. All you had to do to stop the, uh, the, Ukra uh, the Russians from going into Ukraine was just to say, we're not going to let them into NATO. We made that promise to you. That's your biggest thing. We're not going to let them go into NATO. Instead, we say, well, I don't know. And this week, we're saying they're definitely in NATO. What the hell is wrong with us? Yeah, I mean, these are the same guys saying, oh, the Houthis are, are going to be, we're going to put you on the terror list, and then, oh, we're going to, we'll take you off. It's, it's chaos. They're saying, we'll take you off the terror. We won't call you terrorists if you just stop bombing people. Yeah. You think these people care if you call them terrorists? I think you would wear that as a badge of honor. George Soros hates my guts. Could I get that in a little... Can you make a medal for me, George Soros, that I can wear on my chest that I'm an enemy of George Soros? You think that they're like, well, we don't want the United States to call us terrorists. That would be. They're not Harvard students. Yeah, they're not sending their best. Remember when business used to be about making money, taking care of your customers and providing for your family? What happened? Wokeness, DEI, ESG, they've conquered America's best companies, but the spirit of the American entrepreneur is still free. Now, more than ever, the best founders in America are walking away from those corrupt big corporations and blazing their own trail. New founding is rallying these founders who just want to get back to that original American idea of building inspiring and disruptive companies, the very best in the world. New founding is investing in these companies through their venture fund. The companies they invest in are defined by a simple question. Does the country we want to live in need the company this person is building? You can join them. Venture investing isn't for everyone, but if you're a serious, accredited investor who wants to see a more hopeful future for this country, go to newfounding.com backslash venture fund and apply to be an investor. Again, that's newfounding.com backslash venture fund. Join their venture fund today. But look, it's, it's collapsing empire vibes. People can feel it in the air. They're looking for someone who can stop it. Is, is Donald Trump the guy? Can he do it? I think at this point, he's, I mean, Obi-Wan, you're our last hope. <laughs> if you're looking for a solution from a politician, I don't know who has one. I know that Donald Trump, again, I go back to, can you make a medal for me? They hate him. And it's not because he's out of control or anything else. He's America first. That cannot be in to tomorrow's world. It cannot be. Yeah. We are going to a global system. Nobody can say America, look at, um, uh, uh, what's his name in Argentina? What is he doing? Malay. Malay, yeah. look what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Argentina first. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the things that are right for Argentina. And that's what it should be. Otherwise, I, I can't, you know, if, they're intentionally stoking the fires of the Titanic. Icebergs everywhere. They're telling everybody on the deck who goes, wait a minute, why are we moving so fast and there's ice? Why, why are we doing this? Oh, nothing to see here, no problem. Don't say that, that'll panic the other passengers. Well, I've also noticed there's not enough lifeboats on this. They're intentionally sinking our main ship they know there's not enough lifeboats. In fact, they're sabotaging the lifeboats. And then when the ship goes down, the lifeboats, they're telling all of the lifeboats, come back in and pick us all up. They'll sink the lifeboats too. And this is more than you can expect any one man to solve. You can't lay it all at no. the feet of Donald Trump or anyone. No. I mean, look, we need, we need to get 
technology into the hands of Americans who can use them to build stuff that's good for our way of life, good for our form of government, good for our humanity. We need a resurgence of art, not just propaganda. So much of the media is just, just propaganda guns firing it. You know, massive cultural institutions need to be restored. I think the major thing that the only way you're going to control technology um, is if the American people, if all the people in the world own their own information. Yeah. If I choose to sell it to you, and I choose to join a group that's selling it to you, fine. But don't touch anything that I do. You don't have a right to anything unless you pay me for it. If I choose to sell it to you, that's fine. But they've taken, you know, you want to talk about communism. They're exploiting the worker. They're taking all of the work and the sweat off their brow. Blah, blah, blah. That's, that's why we have to be communists. What what is what is big tech doing? They're taking the essence of who we are. Another thing I talked to Ray Kurzweil mm -hmm. about. I said, Ray, let's just say Google AI, you know, has everything that it needs. It will know that I'm looking to develop something to be in direct competition of Google. Why would that AI or why would Google allow me? To continue to do it, how would it, in what universe would it be good for Google to help somebody destroy them or compete against them? Why wouldn't you shut me down? You talk about the sci-fi dystopia. It's the Borg from Star Trek. Exactly. This is what they're building. And do, they want it to be the church and the state. And do you know what his answer was? What? Well, we just wouldn't do that. Oh, okay. Problem solved. <laughs> that was close. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, we just wouldn't do that. Yeah. Crazy. Incredible. I mean, a lot of people are looking at Elon Musk as maybe the guy who can get us out of the mess. You know, but it's this, weird. You look at something like Neuralink, and I don't know. I scratched my head. So I have a daughter who Neuralink could help. Mm -hmm. She had strokes at birth. She has problems communicating, getting information from one side of her brain to the other side of her mm -hmm. brain. Um and I've talked to her about it, and she's like, I don't, I don't want that. Amazing. I don't want that. Um, it'll be promised uh, to be uh, utopia, but it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. It will take the information as fast as it gives the information. And when it gives the information, if you've done anything with chat GPT recently, it's getting worse. It's, it's more and more propaganda and just subtle leaning towards you know, DEI and all of this stuff, you're not going to know just because of the cognitive war that is going on now through social media. They are cognitively moving us as individuals based on our individual knowledge. So you're not going to know when an idea is yours when you've really decided or if you've been manipulated. Yeah. Imagine that going straight into your brain. Yeah, it's cognitive communism. Yeah, I think, I think Elon Musk, because of what he's done with X, mm -hmm. I think he's remarkable. What he's doing with technology, remarkable. He is the Nikolai Tesla of our time, but he could very well become the, um, uh, uh, the Edison of our time, and Edison was an evil sack of crap. Not not widely known, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, just let, how can you distill it down for people? Uh, the 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 case um, against he Edison. would do anything to win, um, including torturing, killing animals, people, um, lie, cheat, steal, use the system to manipulate. Didn't matter if he was right or wrong. Um, he he when he first had the X-ray machine, he had somebody sit in his in his lab, put the x-ray on his arm. When the guy burned beyond belief, had cancer, dead, that's fine. You, your turn, sit here. I mean, he just, he was an evil, evil dude. Evil dude. Um, and I don't think, I just don't think we should put our trust in people, yeah. especially that are that powerful. If all of these catastrophes come true, if all of these nightmares we're talking about happen to unfold over the next couple of years, what is what is Glenn Beck going to do? You going to you going to bug out? Mountain fortress? What's the uh, move? Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I've got a mountain fortress. Um, I suggest everybody lives around people of faith 
who are peaceful, who uh, know how to do things with their hands, <laughs> you know, send your kids to learn how to weld. Send your kids uh, to learn how to fix a car, fix a refrigerator, do things. Um, because all of these in, in income poops with, with, you know, Harvard educations that don't teach them how to do anything, they're going to be wanting food. Yeah. We should be the people that can actually provide it. Well, let's flip that into looking at the bright side. Uh, let's say it's not a total catastrophe. Let's say, you know, we just continue to muddle through the way human beings always have. Uh, what are you looking forward to? What do you think the, the, the good scenario is going to be? Is it some new kind of purple America that kind of people figure out how to put up with each other again? Well, I think we rediscover the traditional values and the value of handmade um, individualistic stuff. You know, we've gone from... We, we, we swing every 40 years. I know, you're, I know you're aware of this, but we swing back from a we society to a me society. Me societies, because everybody's so individualistic, you can't get totalitarianism because everybody's like, no, I'll be the leader. You can't be the leader, you know? And so it's like herding cats. We're at the top of the, of the we cycle. That's extraordinarily dangerous but you're starting to see that come back and people are starting to go, wait, 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 but that's not good. That's not good for everybody. You're trampling everything for the collective and the collective doesn't even agree on all of this stuff, just the elites do. So it's starting to come back. I think if we can hold back the tide long enough, um, uh, I, I see a, a rebirth of, all of society, global society, a reinvention of how to live together in a, in a, in a more sane way, uh, a shedding of a lot of stuff without the um, killing of a lot of people. Yeah, that's what it's all about, not killing lots of people. I mean, yeah. it sounds glib, but it's true. You know, the line can be thin between, uh, between war and peace and, and sanity and chaos. I think holding back the tide is exactly right. And, uh, yeah. you know, I have that hope. It's a time for prayer, and, and I'm glad you have that hope, too. Me, too. Thank you. Glenn, you're welcome anytime. God bless. That's what we got. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Comment below. Who do you want me to interview? Until next time around, I am James Polis. This is Zero Hour. May God have mercy on us all. <laughs>